The OnePlus 10 Pro is OnePlus's flagship phone at the time of recording, and it's a great device, but it's a very different phone compared to Samsung's flagship, the S22 Ultra. Here are the main takeaways. The OnePlus 10 Pro has much better battery life, faster charging speeds from the included charger, a physical alert slider, and it's just more comfortable to use. The Samsung Galaxy S22 Ultra has a slightly better camera with a great telephoto shooter, a better operating system in One UI that will be supported longer and more often, IP68 dust and water resistance, full 5G compatibility in the States, and a stylus, but which is faster. This is the category where these devices are the most similar. Both are speedy, and moving around the interface, opening apps, and unlocking with the in-display feature fingerprint scanners are satisfyingly quick. The 10 Pro originally had a lot of fingerprint misreads for me, but I solved that issue by enrolling the same fingers twice, but that did take a few attempts. Fast performance is what you would expect from the high-end hardware in these devices, which are basically the same under the hood. Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 processors, UFS 3.1 storage, and LP DDR5 RAM. You can get base versions of both phones with 128 gigs of storage and 8 gigs of RAM, and the top versions max out at 12 gigs of RAM for both, but 512 gigs of storage on the 10 Pro instead of one terabyte for the S22 Ultra. For benchmarks, they're close enough not to make much of a real-world difference, but the 10 Pro does come out ahead generally. The S22 wins in Geekbench single-core performance, but loses in multi-core. The 10 Pro wins 3D Mark Wildlife and Antutu. But interestingly, after running the CPU throttling test twice back-to-back, -back, I got this result with better average and minimum performance on the 10 Pro, which only throttled to 85% of its max performance as opposed to the S22 Ultra's 77%. And the 10 Pro managed to stay 2 degrees cooler, so it looks like OnePlus's new cooling solution is certainly helping. As far as gaming, both phones are more than capable of playing demanding titles like Genshin and Asphalt at higher detail settings and frame rates, but OnePlus limits the frame rate for a number of games. The 10 Pro does have a new Hyperboost game engine that throws more processing power at the gaming experience on the device in a more effective way than Samsung's Game Booster. Let's just hope that they allow more games to really use all of the 8 Gen 1 CPU and GPU headroom very soon. One more thing to note just for data speed. If you're looking to use the 10 Pro in the States, it will not be able to use AT&T's 5 5G or Verizon's millimeter wave 5G. This may not be an issue for you, but if so, the S22 Ultra has you covered. Which has the better screen? The S22 Ultra, but only because of its better peak brightness of 1750 nits versus the 10 Pro's 1300 nits. And this really only matters for outdoor viewing, but both are easily viewable in direct sunlight. Besides that, the screens are ridiculously similar. Both are AMOLED with QHD resolutions and adaptive refresh rates that can shift from 120 hertz all the way to 1 hertz to save battery life. Both also have great color representation. The 10 Pro has a higher touch sampling rate at 480 hertz compared to the Ultra's 240 hertz, which means gamers may prefer the 10 Pro, but the S22's 6.8 inch screen does have Gorilla Glass Victus Plus compared to the 10 Pro's 6.7 inch display with last year's plain old Gorilla Glass Victus. And of course, the Ultra also has that included stylus. If you're interested in stylusy things, what about the cameras? Now here's a noticeable difference. The S22 Ultra has quite possibly the best camera system on any Android phone at this time, but depending on what you generally do with your camera, the OnePlus might suit you just as well, since it still has a full-featured flagship camera system. Here are a lot of camera samples, and essentially, the S22 Ultra delivers a more contrasty, saturated image with better detail, while the 10 Pro outputs more natural photos with a better bokeh effect. If this video has been helpful so far, please give it a like, and thank you for that. There were some occasions when the S22 missed focus on a few shots where the 10 Pro did not, and if you're trying to snap that moment of a fast-moving child or pet, the S22 is just better. The S22 Ultra also delivers better images from the selfie camera, and the 10 times telephoto is just great. Night shot performance is close, since both phones struggle in different areas, but I think overall the 10 Pro just handles night shots better. You can shoot in RAW on both devices, but you will need to download Samsung's Expert RAW app if you want to shoot RAW photos on the S22. Video is much the same, except that some of my samples on the 10 Pro had focusing issues. They can both produce great 4K and decent 8K footage, but I really like that I can shoot 4K at 120 FPS on the OnePlus, which the S22 Ultra cannot. Yet it's so frustrating that the 10 Pro selfie camera is limited to 1080, at least when using the stock camera app, where the Ultra can shoot selfie video in 4K. Both apps provide manual video controls and HDR video recording, but only the 10 Pro allows you to film in log. For audio quality, both phones have stereo speakers and sound good, but I think the S22 Ultra sounds more full.
I didn't have any issues with Bluetooth pairing, dropouts, or quality on either device. And sadly, neither have a headphone jack. How about the batteries? The OnePlus wins this category easily. With its included 80 watt or 65 watt charger, its super fast wireless charging speed of 50 watts, and its excellent battery life. Both have 5,000 milliamp hour batteries, but the 10 Pro lasts me about a day and a half to two days with my typical use, where the Ultra only lasts me a full day, with just a little to spare at night. It will also take longer to fill that battery back up on the Ultra with its 45 watt wired and 15 watt wireless charging. And if you want to charge at that faster wired speed, you'll need to buy your own charger since they don't include one in the box. The OnePlus took about 35 minutes to charge from 1 to 100%, and the Samsung takes a little under an hour to do the same. What about the software experience? This is a tough one. Oxygen OS on the 10 Pro is basically a slightly modified version of Color OS from phone maker Oppo. That's not a bad thing. I actually really liked Realme UI on the Realme GT Master, which is also another copy of Color OS. And it's fine here on the 10 Pro, but there are some issues. There's this glitch and occasional hang when I close an app. My media controls will disappear every so often, and just a few other things, like the stock launcher not allowing folders in the app drawer, which isn't a huge problem or a bug, just a preference, and I simply switched to Nova Launcher, where I could still use gesture navigation, and it's been great. Besides those few hiccups here and there, Oxygen OS has been quick and easy to use, but Samsung's One UI is just better and highly polished, and amazingly, I have not found any bugs. Samsung wins again in terms of software support, since it will receive OS updates up to Android 16, and the 10 Pro will only receive up to Android 15. There's also some confusion about what will happen with Oxygen OS. It might get a substantial refresh later this year, and that could bring changes for the better, as well as new, possibly game-changing bugs. Lastly, I prefer to use the OnePlus 10 Pro, because holding this thing and using it every day is just a lot more comfortable. That's due to its smaller size and rounded edges, but also because of the alert slider, which is a game-changer. Imagine setting your phone to vibrate without waking it up or even looking at it. If you're rough on your devices, though, you might be better off with the Samsung, since the 10 Pro lacks an IP rating, unless you get the T-Mobile version in the States. Oh, and Zach Nelson was able to snap it in half on his Jerry Rig Everything channel. I'm personally not worried about either of those potential issues, and I'd be happy to use the 10 Pro over the S22 Ultra any day to save the 340 US dollars and the hand cramps. If you think the OnePlus 10 Pro or the Samsung S22 Ultra is the right phone for you, you should definitely check out Wireless Place, since they have OnePlus and Samsung devices, as well as phones from Xiaomi, Realme, Motorola, and more. I've bought a few phones from Wireless Place, and they always ship fast and internationally, have great prices, plus they include a US adapter for the charger if you need it. Please use my discount code PC10 when you check out if you want to support the channel or just want to save a little money. A link to the site is in the description. Please subscribe if you want to see more content like this and feel free to comment with any questions you might have and I will answer them perfectly, legitimately.